Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be doing player object interaction. So I've just set up a really basic scene here and in on this door frame, uh, I've actually just set up two animations. Um, let me get those up real quick. Uh, one of them is a close animation of the door and one of them is an opening animation. So essentially our goal with our little character here is to open up the door. So, in game, you know, what what you would, I've got my little character here, I can jump, move around, that kind of stuff. Uh, this, is, this is supposed to happen. But, uh, what we want to do is make it so we are controlling it, not the, not the animator. Uh, so, first of all, we'll set up the animator. So, essentially, if we want the door on entry, so here's our entry point here in the animator, uh, we can actually drag this in. So, let's drag it in so it's goes closed when when we start the game right we also want these not to loop so let's just grab these and uh deselect loop on each of them awesome then in the animator we can create transitions between the two and then create not a new layer go into parameters on the left hand side create a trigger and we'll call this uh activate activate cool then inside these little arrows, by the way, you can make these arrows by right clicking and go make transition. Uh, make one, one there and one back. And then if we go onto these arrows, we can add and the condition is activate. And let's turn has exit time off as we don't want, as we want to be, if we want to be able to open or close it during the animation. Cool. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go onto our player and i've just got this little scripts folder here and we can create a new c-sharp script called player actions and i'm going to double click this to open it up in visual studio and i'm just going to remove all the text and i'm going to create a public float and this is going to be called sorry a public transform and this is going to be called um, camera or cam, actually, to make it short. We're going to make a public float called uh, player view or player pickup, player activate distance. And we're also going to create a public trend, a public layer mask. <laughs> um, you know, we won't be, we actually won't be having a layer mask. Cool, so in our, in our update method, we're gonna make a raycast hit, and we're gonna be just calling it hit. Then on our next line, first of all, in, with a bool, we can go bool, uh, called active. Set it equal to false to begin with. And we can go active is equal to physics dot raycast and here we can input a few values we can input it at the cam dot position so we're going to place the raycast based on where the camera is pointing i'll explain what a raycast is in a second camera dot position we want to get the forward direction of the camera so we can go cam dot transform direction and then in brackets we can go vector three dot forward out hit so uh, um out, out doing a hit <laughs> and then we're sending data into the hit uh because the out rec asset is what we have everything and then we'll do it by player activate distance cool uh, so pretty much what we can do now is we can see if the player clicks or uh instead of clicking we can do a hotkey so we can go if input dot get key down probably don't want to happen every frame we can go key code dot f f's usually a one that I, I would recommend to do it as it's nice and easy to use and not only if it's f we can go and and hit dot game object actually and and active is equal to true cool so then we can also check if hit dot game object does not equal to null 
or actually instead hit dot game object hit dot the game object dot get component animator does not equal to null then we can go hit dot game object dot get component animator dot set trigger oh then here we can input a trigger name so our one is called activate and there we go cool so this is pretty much the basic script it's really simple um hit, <laughs> yep of course it's actually not game object sorry it's transform haven't used raycast in a while so i might be a little bit shaky but um we'll get through it cool so now on our door let's make sure that there is a animator yep and as you can see i've given us the tag door this doesn't really matter i was kind of uh, doing it a little bit differently in my head uh, when I was doing this, but it has a box collider and if our players Raycast which is pretty much a ray they get shot from a certain position in a certain direction uh, In our case, it's from the player camera Let's just drag this player action onto the player um, But the ray is gonna hit the door and if we click F then it's going to activate the uh, Animator on the door now obviously this can apply to literally anything you can um you're, you're able just to you know change this however you want you can make it change a value on something we're getting the component or anything like that now if we go over here and we click f as you can see the door flings open and if we do that again the door flings shut now obviously we actually can't see ourselves and we can't see our uh player so uh well, no, a player. We can't see our player cursor. That's what I meant. So, we'll cross here. So, if we if we want to be able to see someone like that, just really basically without putting any effort in, uh, we can create a canvas and then, uh, you know, d concept exercise, scale with screen size, uh, create another UI component, we'll call it image. Um, actually, we'll create a empty called cross here. You know, it's it's we're gonna make this really basic. We have a few images. Uh, the width could be like something like fifty. Sorry, width could be something like ten, and height could be something like uh, eighty. Not even eighty, actually. Now that I think about it, we'll do like fifty. We've got positive forty. Copy paste. Negative 40. Copy paste. 40. 0. Just make something quite basic here. Cool. So now if we... <laughs> that's way too big. Uh, luckily we can scale this whole thing down. That's a little bit more bearable. Now if we go over here, we can easily see, obviously this is probably a bit still too big, and as you can see, we can uh, open and close this as we please. Really simple, uh, really basic, uh, by the way, the, uh, the distance that, you, that it activates at is uh, dependent on this value here, so if you want to make it activate close, uh, which I'd recommend, uh, you can't do it from here, you have to get quite close to be able to do it. There we go. But even then, that's a bit, that's a bit, uh, bit excessive. You might want to go, like, uh, somewhere like three, you know, so you can act favor from a distance. Yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Uh, and if you don't, if you need any help, join our Discord. The link is in the description, available for everyone. And I love helping people with their coding and that kind of stuff. So I'm always pretty much always active on there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later.